evening. I'd like to call our regular business meeting to order and ask the treasurer to call the roll. Mr. Baker, present. Vice President Baker, present. Mr. Brown, here. Vice President Cole, here. Ms. Gibbs, here. Ms. Raglan, present. Ms. Reyes, here. You have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Treasurer, and in honor of our last meeting, as a point of personal privilege, I would like to ask Ms. Gibbs to join me in leading the Pledge of Allegiance. And we do also have a special guest who will ask to stand and come to the podium and join us, and that is Mrs. Stanley Bohork is with us this evening. So, <laughs> I'd like to thank you for being here this evening. And or did she's she... shaking her head back there. No, no she said. <laughs> It was his idea, but okay. Oh, no, no. Oh. Miss Gibbs, would you please join? If everyone would be upstanding, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Just inside, 
Does your wings up as you rise? If your heart feels overwhelmed, just know you're never by yourself. Put your hand in mine, hold your head up high, and together we'll rise. Melani, thank you very much. Thank you for that outstanding performance. I know it's not easy to sing a cappella in front of a room full of, of people, but you, you did a great job. Thank you for being here this evening. Alex, let's uh, prepare to adopt the agenda. I'll read through briefly just so we know the work before us this evening. Uh, we do have one board recognition, after which we will hear uh, from public comment. We do have a number of speakers signed up this evening. We will then hear uh, executive reports, after which we will uh, have one item of board legislation, then our consent agenda, after which we will hear uh, announcements, and um, I'll make end-of-year remarks, and then we will have another special recognition led by the Vice President. No executive session tonight. Is there a motion that we adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Moved. moved and seconded. Cole and Gibbs. Mr. Treasurer? Ms. Adair? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Vice President Cole? Yes. Ms. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Ragland? Yes. Ms. Reyes? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you very much, Mr. Treasurer. Um, as we know, the Centennial Stars football team had a, or an, historic football season this year. And we are very proud, of course, of them and their coach, Dante Goosby. Board member Adair has a recognition resolution to offer in honor of Coach Goosby and the entire Centennial Stars family. And I'll ask Coach and anyone else who is here from Centennial to come up to the podium at this time. And then I will call on board member Adair. Thank you, President Baker. It is my honor to recognize Dante Goosby, who earned State Coach of the Year for Division Three All Ohio Football. And if my colleagues will allow me, I'm not going to read this resolution. I want to speak from my heart because I've known Dante Goosby a very long time. Um, we are proud alum of Centennial High School class of 1998 together, where I was his cheerleader when he was a football player. <laughs> I made him locker signs and got him popcorn to cheer him on when, in fact, we never really won. And, in fact, if we did win, it was the highlight of the year to win this one game. But I think that says a lot for Dante and what he brings to this athletic program and what it means for him to be an alumni of this district. He is the spirit of success. He went through. He graduated. He came home and he pours back into his students and his team all the lessons that he has learned. When I called him and said, will you come and receive this recognition? He said, uh, Jen, I just don't know. That's just, it's too much. I, I just, it feels kind of selfish on my part. And I said, no, that's exactly why. That's exactly why you need to be here to stand up and show that we here in this district take pride in what we create and what we help accomplish. So this isn't about you just being coach of the year and having a phenomenal season. This is about you being you and you inspiring a group of young men and a group of alumni and a school and a community to be their best. And so Dante, now therefore it be resolved that the Columbus Board of Education honors Dante Goosby as Coach of the Year for the Ohio Prep Sports Writers Association Division III All-Ohio Football Team. And be it further resolved that the Columbus Board of Education urges all Columbus residents to join the board in celebrating and honoring the dedication of Dante Goosby as coach, teacher, alumnus, and community member, and to recognize him and his team on their historic 2019 football season. So moved. And so that is a motion and second on item 3.1. And uh, Mr. Treasurer? President Baker? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. 
President Cole? Yes. Ms. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Raglan? Yes. Ms. Reyes? Yes. And Ms. Adair? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Coach, do you have any comments? And let us know who you have with us tonight, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not prepared to speak tonight, and I know Keith Street is in the in the crowd right now. She can tell you, you guys don't want me to get off schedule, so <laughs> I'll keep it short and brief. And I'll just say thank you very much. Obviously, Jennifer, um, Dr. Dixon, ladies and gentlemen of the board, thank you very much. Yes. And who is taking the photo? I know we're going to take a photo. Oh, where do you want us to stand? We're following your lead, but tell us. Oh, let your boss tell us where to go. Thank you, Coach. Thanks for taking the time to be here. Thanks for a great year. And we'll look for um, look for a repeat next year. Can you repeat that? Yeah, I'm sure you can. Yeah, thank you. Uh, speaking of board recognition, I just want to say uh, quickly, uh, Superintendent, Treasurer, Internal Auditor, each of you has a gigantic poinsettia that's uh, sitting there in front of you or beside you. You also have uh, end of year thank you cards from the board. So uh, we express our gratitude in those flowers and Let's move on to public comment, and uh, I'll call your name, and when I do, I'll ask you to approach the podium. Uh, you'll have four minutes to speak, and uh, we will probably have a timer on the screen here, and we'll ask you to conclude within four minutes, if at all possible. Speaker number one, Rhonda Doffman, I apologize. Topic, tax abatement in the 43205 zip code, board action requested. Explain how the schools in the area will benefit from the tax abatement. Come right on up to the podium. Ms. Ms. Dauphin, are you among us this evening? Okay, we'll move on. Um, speaker number two is Mr. Lawrence Alls. Topic. Retiring members, thank you. Board action, I would just like to say thank you for your service. Mr. Alls, please approach the podium. Good evening, how are you? Nice to see you. Um, this is not my long prepared speech, so don't worry. Um, Today, I made a decision to come down and to say thank you to Shauna and to you, Gary. Not because of anything that they have done for me, but my watching them over a long period of time devote time and energy to caring. And I think that I have a concern that the community as a whole 
does not reward community service. So I said, I didn't know who was going to say, thank you. So I said, in case it wasn't said, I was going to do it. So thank you. The last comment is this. I've been known to be a fierce critic and supporter of this district, its levies, and I reserve that right to be both. But out of all of that, I do appreciate sincerity. And I think you two exemplify that. And again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alls. Good evening. Uh, speaker number three, Jeremy Dalcar, and I do apologize if I've mispronounced your name. Topic, mindfulness, board action. I would like the board to let students decide to participate or not in the mindfulness of the curriculum. Are you among us this evening? Jeremy Dalcar? Just, okay, please approach the podium. Good evening. Um, basically, this is um, out of concern. I have a ch small child, she's in the first grade. Um, and my main concern is just for those who don't know what mindfulness is, it's um, basically described as um, some way to relieve stress. But my main concern is that um, the fact that it's a part of curriculum and therefore they're being, being graded and for those who object to that particular form, I don't believe it's fair to hold a student accountable as far as grade wise. You know, if it's some, I feel like it should be something that should be optional. If they choose to partake in it or choose not to, I don't believe it should be um, presented to the whole class as a, you know, a form of, you know, a part of the curriculum. Um, my daughter's main concern was that she didn't want to get a bad grade, and that's basically what prompted me to come here today. Um, I have instructed her not to participate. Um, Mainly, I do have a spiritual issue, but my main issue is the fact that it's a graded thing. And I don't mind, I respect everyone's right to believe what they choose to believe, but I don't think it's fair for a student to be graded if they choose not to or choose to participate. That's really my only concern about it. Now, my daughter loves school. Participate in anything school related. So that's really what it boils down to. Um, and I, I do believe, um, like, if this was something that was either off campus or the students given a choice to, you know, have to, someone to speak to about it, I wouldn't mind. But again, my main concern is that for someone who might disagree with that particular form, um, putting them in a spot. I don't want to tell my daughter to like not you know honor her her educational priorities but at the same time I do want to teach her to stand on her faith and stand what she for what she believes in. I don't and I don't want her to be penalized for it. So that's basically my issue or concern and I I would like it to be something that would be optional as opposed to being mandatory. Um, other than that, I'm fine with it. I, everyone has the right to do, you know, what they choose to do. But um, as far as the classroom, I do believe school should be for, you know, reading, writing, spelling, math. Other things, like, like I said, if you want to have something or someone set aside that they can speak to, that would be fine with that too. As, as far as a means to, you know, deal with any kind of stress or, or whatnot that might, you know, come along with it. 
that's just basically my issue. Uh, thank you very much for sharing that. Have you spoken with someone in the administration at the building level about your concerns? I have. I spoke to the principal. Okay. Um, is that conversation ongoing, or did you not receive this, what you expected? Uh, it actually took place last year. Um, this year, I just it was I wasn't uh, it wasn't brought to my attention that it was actually a graded issue mm -hmm. until this year. Last year, I believe it was something that they just kind of you know did as a means to start a class or whatnot. But my daughter has explained to me that it's a part of they, something they do every day, and they are you know required. To Madam Superintendent, might I ask that you put him in touch with someone who he can speak with about his concerns? Okay. So if you'll, um, if you'll wait around a little bit, uh, <coughs> someone will come over and speak to you about your concerns. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. All right. Item or speaker number four, excuse me, Dr. Kalanda Stewart. Topic, HBCU homecoming announcement. Uh, board action. I would like the Board of Education to attend the HBCU homecoming event. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening, President Baker, Vice President Cole, members of the Board of Education, Superintendent Dixon, and members of the Cabinet. I would like to present this statement on behalf of our president of the Twin Rivers, Ohio chapter of the Lynx Incorporated, President Linda Davis, and it reads, Historically, black colleges and universities, often referred to as HBCUs, started prior to the Civil War when opportunities and institutions for educating African Americans were nearly unheard of. Although they have declined in numbers over the years, their numbers are currently on the rise as HBCUs continue to be essential in instilling a feeling of pride and a knowledge of culture. In addition to the benefits they provide to their students, and more specifically to many of our students here in CCS, they are also providing our community with some of its most notable members. For example, Dr. Talicia Dixon, the superintendent of Columbus City Schools, is a graduate of Mississippi Valley State. Current statistics provided by the Thurgood Marshall College Fund show that among African Americans, HBCU graduates comprise 40% of the members of Congress, 50% of lawyers, and 80% of judges. One such individual who we are excited and honored to be celebrating with this year is Congresswoman Joyce Beatty, a graduate of Central State University. Another university contributing to these numbers is Clark Atlanta University. Clark Atlanta University was officially established in 1988 when Clark college and Atlanta University consolidated. The models of these individual schools are, I'll find a way or make one, Atlanta University, and the culture of service was Clark Colleges. We are incredibly fortunate to have a Clark Atlanta graduate among our community members who have lived out these statements by using her position to contribute to future generations through dedicated service to our students and staff members, not only in Columbus City Schools, but throughout Central Ohio and beyond. It will be our distinct honor to recognize board member W. Shauna Gibbs as the inaugural recipient of the 2019 Central Ohio HBCU Alumni Alumna of Distinction for her significant contributions to the community and for her unwavering support of HBCUs. you to join us on December 28th from 2 to 6 p.m. for the second annual HBCU homecoming event to celebrate and educate about the past, present, and future of HBCUs, their impact on Columbus City Schools, and the special award presented by Congresswoman Beatty for Ms. Gibbs at 4 o'clock p.m. right here in this auditorium. Columbus City Schools family and community members are all invited to register today on Eventbrite. Seating is very limited, so please make sure you register today because we don't want anyone to miss out on this historic moment. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stewart. Any uh, clarifying questions? 
You're in trouble. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here this evening. Thank I appreciate you. it. We'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our next speaker is Charity Martin King. Uh, topic, recognition of W. Shauna Gibbs. Board action, recognition of board member W. Shauna Gibbs. Good evening. Charity Martin King, are you among us? There you are. Charity Martin Vias. I know. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Board Member Baker, members of the board, uh, Dr. Talicia Dixon, Ms. Gillison, Chief Engagement Officer. Um, it's just an honor and a privilege to be here. I stand here as president of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Gamma Zeta Zeta Chapter in Columbus, Ohio, standing with me are some of our, one of our life members, our scholarship chair, members of our executive team, and our leadership. I stand here also as, they tease me because I'm wearing a lot of pins. I have on my sorority pin tonight to thank you for being there for us for our adopt -a school initiative, for being on call at Broadly, for helping us when we donated to families and you came and read with us with the children. I've never had to email you. I could always make a call. And I'm humble for that. I'm also wearing tonight my Columbus City Schools pin. I'm a proud Columbus City School graduate from Eastmore High School. <laughs> and I thank you for your work for this <laughs> district. And my son is also a Columbus City School graduate from Eastmore <laughs> Academy. <laughs> Tonight, I also wear my Columbus City League pin. As a retired 20-year basketball coach in this district, I thank you and this board for the support that you gave to us as coaches when we challenged the Ohio High School Athletic Association. I will never forget that. I also wear tonight my Ohio State pin. As a graduate of The Ohio State University and now as the Director of Social Change for the University, I thank you for providing access to students above all to college so that they could pursue their dreams beyond the ways that they even imagined for serving on the I know I can board for several years and for everything that you have done there were times where I would visit schools and I ran into you you didn't do it for the cameras but you've always done it for the kids there's one memory that I have in my two minutes and about four seconds <laughs> when I was on stage at Eastmore Academy for its graduation, then I was sitting there in the back, and you began to lose your footing. If one of my members could present her with these roses, Shauna, I will never forget, I consider you not just a leader, but a friend. You began to lose your footing because you had already spoken at five or six graduations and were running around the convention center and we're close to passing out. I remember sitting there and placing my hand on your back and sliding you a mint and praying that you didn't fall forward off of the stage. But it makes me think about your tireless dedication to our kids. So those roses in crimson tied with a white or cream bow are symbolic also of your 13 years, 13 years of service for Columbus City School students. In addition to that, I want to present you from our chapter a box. In this box are pearl earrings. You are also an agitator. Pearls are created by agitation because if that piece of sand that is agitated is not enclosed in that pearl, you will never be there. The last thing I want to give you for the 13, 13 years, those pearls, are not just symbolic of your years, but also the year that your beloved organization was founded. The number 13 is symbolic biblically also because it is considered the day of suffering, the day of suffering of Christ. If you could raise your box of pearls, may that red ribbon remind you tied in that red bow of the love and the transgressions when Christ was wounded for ours and bruised for our iniquities. Thank you for the wounds and the bruises that you have endured for this district. I will never forget it. And the women of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Gamma Zeta Zeta Chapter, 
Thank you as well. And that is my time. Thank you very much, speaker. And let's move on to our next speaker, uh, B.J. Simmons Talley. Uh, topic, uh, Transparency of Communications. Board action requested like the board to be transparent uh, regarding transportation. B.J. Simmons Talley, good evening. Good evening. Good Welcome. Evening. Welcome back. Oh, thank you yes, to President Baker, Vice President Cole, all the special board members, and to Dr. Dixon. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to stand in the, on behalf of the NAACP. The uh, reason for my standing is to that we be transparent, especially with transportation. Many of our customers really do not know the procedure and what transportation does. Uh, they know that we bus kids, they know that we look out for them, but they do not know the nuts and the bolts of transportation. So the communication that they are receiving right now is not very good. I know we have an answer machine. Nobody want to hear an answer machine when you're upset and you want to know where your child is. So. They want to listen, they want to talk to a person, a live person. So when we call and when the members and your customers are calling you, they don't want that machine. They want you to tell them, although we have a call center at transportation, I don't know whether they know how to get that call center or the procedure of going to the call center. But I want you to understand that Although we do just bus Columbus City School, but we do have the charter school also. And all those schools are on different bail time. And so our parents, whether they know it or not, have to understand that the different bail time and we are busing majority of Columbus and Franklin County. And not and that's not even counting the special ed. So I want to thank Dr. Dixon for setting up a meeting with us in January. And I want to wish each one of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year until after our meeting. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and since you're here, Ms. simmons Talley, let, let me thank you on behalf of the board for your years of service to the yes. district. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Our next speaker, Deborah, President, excuse me, Deborah Pickens. Topic: <coughs> Recognition of W. Shauna Gibbs. Board action requested recognition of W. Shauna Gibbs. Uh, President Pickens, are you among us this evening? Please approach the podium and welcome back. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. To President Baker, Vice President Cole, Treasurer Bahoric, Internal Auditor Smith, members of the board, especially my nephew, uh, James Raglan, and Superintendent Dixon. 
I am Deborah Pickens. I'm president of the Columbus, Ohio alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta. I am uh, W. Shawna Gibbs' uh, president. At times, I get to tell her what to do. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. W. Shawna Gibbs has many aspects to her life. Some will know her through her works on the school board, some through Gibbs for Kids, some for her community activism and involvement, and some personally through her expanded family. I've come to know Shauna through Delta Sigma Theta Sorority in Corporate. Shauna started her journey on April 26, 2003, and has served in many roles from new initiate to committee member committee chair, and now as leader. She has worked and continues to work in the local chapter. Work is our currency. Her contributions and leadership with the Shirley Chisholm Girls in Government Conference, she loves long titles, and Alexa Canada <laughs> Conference for Future Doctors and Dentists are still impacting the youth of the community to this day, and we really appreciate you. In 2 Timothy 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 6 through 7 states, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Shauna has emptied herself into all of her works for the benefit of God's kingdom. Her time of departure from the Columbus City Board is at hand. She has done her best, which is all anyone can ask of a public servant. And she has finished the race strong and remained faithful to her true calling and purpose. But unlike Paul, she still has work to be done. W. Shauna Gibbs, your work speaks for itself. There's no judgment. It's only respect and appreciation for all that you do for the city and the youth in the Columbus area. On behalf of the 305 members of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority and Corporate Columbus Chapter, I wish you much success in any future endeavors that you choose to pursue. Much Delta love to you. We have roses for you, red and white, of course, <laughs> and a little token of our appreciation. Thank you so much. I would ask our members to come forward All the Deltas would come forward, please. Thank you all for being here tonight.
Thank you, President Pickens, and uh, thanks to all the members of Delta for being here this evening. And not just for being here, and this goes for, for um, all the sororities who are with us this evening. Thank you for your ongoing service to the district and specifically to the students of our district. It's greatly appreciated. Our next speaker is Mr. Sam Gresham. Mr. Gresham, would you come to the podium, please? Good evening. Thank you Good for evening. being here. Nice to see you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. President, yep. Mr. Vice President, and members of the Board of Education. I was not prepared for this, <laughs> but I have never seen a microphone that I didn't fall in love with. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to handle it. Uh, I'll start with the proposition that I met China Gibbs when she was 16 years old. And she had some ideas. She was in our program, uh, Operation Brightside Team. And they were going out cutting uh, grass for seniors. And she said to me she was going to be a, a beautician. I said, no, you're not. And you're going to hang out with me for a little while. I didn't know it was going to be this many years. Uh, and... We put her on a path, and I remember her, her father and her mother. I promised her that if she went to college, I would hire her every summer at the Urban League. And when the summers were over, I would give her a job at the Urban League. And I, when I did that, her parents said, most people don't do what they say they're going to do. I said, I made a commitment, and I keep my commitment. I think the dynamism that exists in you, uh, is unbelievable. All these years and all these things. All you've done is gotten better. You're one of the best people on the stump I've ever seen in my life. You can put a piece together and knock people over without much thought. And you have a rhythm and a projection when you produce it. Something we worked on. I don't know if people in the audience know the relationship that me and this young lady had. We struggled together. We cried together. We joy together. She is a member of my family. She is in our family portrait, and she comes to every month we have a dinner. And everybody, all my children come in the house. And we sit down and argue and watch their growth. Uh, the, the fabulous thing from that is I know all my grandchildren's names. And I have 13 of them, so I know all their names. And for a lot of grandparents, that's a difficult thing. What you're doing now is a transition. It's not an end. And I want you to understand that because I'm not going to let that happen. You have too many gifts to give to this community in one form or another. And you're going to give those gifts. And I spent a lot of time developing them, so I don't want them to go to waste. <laughs> well, I did. Uh, you are truly one of my daughters. And I truly see you as the leader I should have had born biologically. That's all right. I'll take it. Uh, you are a charm. Uh, your family loves you. They care about you. Now, what I'm looking forward to in my last 30 uh, uh, minutes, seconds, <laughs> is I want to see that light shine somewhere and do something different. And I'm not going to let you go until we decide what that's going to be. Our family, the Gresham, honor you revere you and respect you for who you are and you'll always be a child of ours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mr. Gresham. It's always a pleasure to see you. Our uh, next speaker, someone who I believe would like to share a few comments on the retirement of board members, is President John Coniglio. President Coniglio, good evening. Good 
President Baker, Vice President Cole, honorable board members. Um, on behalf of the 4,000 plus members of the Columbus Education Association, I would like to say thank you for your combined service um, that totals more than a quarter of a century. The length of your service and your dedication shows a tr true commitment to the children of Columbus. Both of you have helped uh, move this district forward and have planned uh, the seeds for continued success. And if I am a betting man, I am sure that you will continue advocating for the children of Columbus. And so I would like to say thank you for your service. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, President Thank you. And although she said she may not be able to stay, she may still be here. And that's President Lois Carson. President Carson, would you like to share some remarks? Good evening. This is rough. I shared some remarks at a board meeting a few weeks ago. Um, I represent the state of Ohio for OPSI, and I have a lot of my members say, oh, I can't stand my board members. Oh, I can't work with my board members. Oh, my board members are so complicated. And I look at Andre and our members, and I think, our board members are okay. They're okay. We fight, we scream, we argue, but at the end of the day, we have a working relationship. And that's good to know when you can pick up the phone and call one another and break bread together with one another, scream at one another, but walk away with an understanding that it's not about the adults that were just at the table. It's about the children we serve. And for that, my two friends, I'm going to miss those debates, those conversations. But as members have said tonight and community members have said, we're not going to let you get too far away. We're going to let you rest. But come spring, Andrea and I will be calling you and we will be saying, OK, you rested long enough. Now what can we do and can we move forward and let's find new projects for you to work on because remember, I now represent the state, so I can move you all about this precious <laughs> old state, and I got a few small urban rural districts that could use some board members, so I'm even willing to move you guys to sit on some of the boards when my members say we don't get respect back. So if you're looking to move, just give me a call, and I'll find a school district that I can send you to. But on the for real note, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your service. President Baker, I will miss our long conversations. Shauna, I will miss them. You, hey girl, what's up? And let's talk. Much love to both of you. May you both get the most deserved rest. Uh, the public doesn't realize that these public jobs can kick your tail. You guys have given up a lot over the years. You've lost a lot over the years to serve the children of Columbus. And for that, the members of OPSI asked me, we thank you, and we look forward to continue to work with you. Again, I can move you at the drop of a hat. Just call me. Thank you. Thank you, President Carson. Um, and I have one final speaker who has asked to go last for logistical reasons. Is there anyone else who signed up to speak this evening to the board who may not be on this list? All right. So our last speaker is the amazing T Street. And I will ask Ms. Street approach the podium. Good evening. I believe that um, Coach King is going to get my special guest who asked to come and join me for this presentation this evening. Good evening, President Baker, Vice President Cole, Treasurer Verhorek, Internal Auditor Smith, members of the board, and Superintendent Dr. Talisa Dixon. These are my special guests who wanted to join me this evening for this presentation. Come stand right here, guys. 
You gotta walk faster because you're on my time. <laughs> <laughs> These are my guests. Psalms 127.3 reads, Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Shauna, you are the heritage of W.D. and Barbara Gibbs. Not bad for the daughter of a teen mom and a garbage collector. You've done well. And I can assure you, you posed the question two Saturdays ago, would your mom be proud? Was someone who had the opportunity to talk to her four days before her passing and get the charge of life from her for you, I can assure you that Minister Barbara Gibbs is proud. And that while children are the heritage of the Lord, three of these are the heritage of your rearing. And so, I'm happy that they were able to join me tonight. And this one is the heritage of our rearing. And I'm happy that he was able to join us tonight. W. Shauna Gibbs. For what does the W stand? The W stands for the woman who waited on the Lord before applying to serve and before deciding to leave. The W stands for the wondrous woman that life has knocked down 100 times yet you choose to rise 101. The W stands for the willful woman that you are when you are fighting for what is right. Nothing can make you acquiesce or compromise. The W stands for the witty woman who never takes herself too seriously and is the comedic life of every party. The W stands for the wonder woman who never meets a stranger, will talk to a tree, is a true ride or die, a vault, and a keeper of the secrets of others, who shows up for the things and the people that matter to you, who is a forgiver of transgressions, friend to the friendless, mother to the motherless, aunt to the audiences, mentor to the masses, and most importantly in this role, gives for kids. The number one question I get these days, other than when is the community going to celebrate Shauna? is what is Shauna going to do next? My answer is always the same, whatever she wants, because mm -hmm. she's got it like that. Stand as I close, I will say to you on behalf of all of the people in the audience who are not on the agenda to speak, volunteers, young people, the young lady who sang today as a member, she was so excited in the hallway, to ask me, did I remember? Yes, I remember that you attended the uh, Shirley Chisholm Conference for Girls in Government. Um, and so I represent all the other community members, too, far too many to come to the podium tonight. But when they ask me the question, Sands, what are you going to do next? I will simply say, before me stretches an array of days, dark days filled with bitterness, bright days too short for gladness. Gray days gloom with melancholy. Another year of life draws to its close. What has been written is written. Neither regret nor tears can wipe away the shame or pride or foolishness of it. Yet the future lures. Hope beckons ever on. Faith lends her strength to faltering fingers that they may write on a new page. Life does offer. Fewer words, kinder thoughts, better deeds. Sands, I'm so excited to get you back for all the sacrifices and for all the service that you've given to this district well beyond 13 years, but for the 13 years that you served on this board on behalf of a grateful community and on behalf of the 51,000 children, all Columbus City Schools alumni, including the speaker, we thank you for your 13 years of sacrifice. President Baker, you know I would, you know I love you, and I'm going to take you out to eat. And I know you think you're an honorary Delta, but yours has to be separate. <laughs> but yours has to be separate. Yours has to be separate. But tonight, says we just wanted to come, and I wanted to bring you the greatest surprise of them all. And so your babies have something they'd like to present to you.
thank you to the amazing T Street and those special guests. And that does, I believe, conclude our list of public speakers. Unless we have omitted anyone, I believe that does conclude the list. Thank you. Did I miss somebody? No. Okay. Thank you to everyone who took the time to come to the meeting to address the board this evening. We do appreciate it. Let's move on then to executive reports. Madam Superintendent, have you a report for the board this evening? Uh, no, I don't have an official report, but I would like to take this time out to say thank you to you and um, Shauna Gibbs. Um, I remember meeting you both when I was a principal. Um, Gary was quite a shy man. He didn't really say much. He kind of just stood and smiled. Um, however, Shauna was always a <laughs> strong spirit. Um, and I recall her saying to me when I was moved to Columbus Alternative High School, she said, you better do well. Um, and she meant it because she was always visiting um, to make sure that, um, you know, she just she always inspected what she expected. Um, so as we fast forward and look at the leadership that you still have both provided, you never take that for granted. Um, as someone stated earlier, that public service has its ups and is down. But people have to realize that you dedicate your lives to this work and that there are many sacrifices that come with it. So I don't take lightly that I am in this position because of you and the other board members who um, said and believed in my leadership um, in the team that I've comprised together um, because what was important to you and the other board members at that time was that you wanted someone who could do the best for all the kids that we serve. So I appreciate your support. Um, then I appreciate that Gary is no longer that shy person that I met years ago and um, that you both have pushed me and my team to make sure that we give our best to our students. So thank you for that commitment. Thank you for that support um, in us. And we know that um, you will not be forgotten and the work that you have done and demonstrated today and in the past will stay with me um, for years to come. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. <laughs> Say, uh, during your years at Cause, those were that was my first and second year on the board, and my grandmother taught me to first seek to understand and then to be understood. So I was learning a lot those first few years. Yes. Thank you very much for yes. what I learned from you. Yes. All right, and does that conclude your report, Madam Superintendent? Yes, I conclude because I know my colleagues have something to say, and I don't want to take up too much time. Thank you, uh, Madam Internal Auditor. Have you a report? For What I could say has already been said by so many tonight, but um, I'm going to certainly miss working with you and Shauna and the support that you have given to the Office of Internal Audit and to me, which really demonstrates your commitment to accountability and to transparency. So um, as uh, you will hear Mr. Cole say in our report, we do have an opening for a community member on <laughs> accountability. <laughs> I will let you get rested up like everyone else, and then uh, I might come knocking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madam Internal Auditor. I, I do believe that Ms. Gibbs would be an excellent addition to the committee. <laughs> Mr. Cole. Uh, Mr. Treasurer. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I am well. Uh, would you like to introduce your guest? Uh, you, you did earlier. <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> Because because we've had such a special relationship the, these these five years when you um, tended to let board meetings run fairly lengthy, um, and I've had to text and report back that perhaps I might not be home uh, when we had intended. 
I thought it would be um, appropriate to have my wife here this evening to uh, witness your last your, your last board meeting. So she's sitting in the back. Her name's Jan, and we are both um, graduates of Whetstone High School um, in the same class. Um, some almost 50 years ago, believe it or not, but, uh, um, and uh, we've not been married that long. But anyway, she's here in the back. Um, there she is. Hi, Jan. <laughs> so thanks for that opportunity. Um, Absolutely. And uh, I would, I'll, as uh, Carolyn said, I'd echo a lot of the comments but uh, that ever, others have made. But it's, um, as a direct report, it's been a very interesting a relationship over the over the time it's one that not everybody um, gets to see directly and one that not everyone truly understands um, and um, I have I will say that I have certainly enjoyed this time together and uh, like others I highly suspect that this is not the last time that I or any of us will, will hear from you so and unfortunately tonight it also or <coughs> maybe Unfortunately, but I like the record also to show that I requested not to do my financial report at this meeting because it's a little uh, odd at this point in time given the uh, the tone of this meeting. But I'll go ahead and do it anyway if that's okay. Yes, sir. This would be um, the had some got some report. So anyway, this evening uh, is my official executive report. This is a financial report for the month ending uh, November uh, two thousand and nineteen. And as has been the case in, in uh, many of the previous months, uh, year-to-date revenues are above plan and expenditures are running under plan. The total revenues this month came in just slightly under plan, but are still uh, above for the year, um, just about $7 million over plan or about 2% variance on $425 million that was estimated so far. On the expenditure side, we were under plan uh, this month, uh, just under a million dollars. And again, 93.2 million um, was planned for the month. We're 17 million under under plan for the year on 384 million in expenditures. And as a result of those two variances, cash balance is up <coughs> about 23 million under plan. The November uh, highlights in revenue: uh, state aid was under plan this month by about 900 thousand. And year to date, it's running 4.4 million under plan. And as you well know, our plan included uh, an increase in state revenue, but the, that increase that we received is being uh, reported in a separate fund uh, for the student wellness and success funds. The other revenue line has been has been typical, is still running above plan, about 600000 this month, 3.4 million above plan year to date. This is just a, a graphic represent, representation of that. I explained to Finance Committee last Wednesday that um, of the two largest categories, the property taxes and state aid, that represent 90% of our year-to-date revenue, we have a, a variance year-to-date of 0.14%. So we're very much on target in 90% of our revenue. We look at variances, uh, the magnitude of those variances, um, anything over $5 million in uh, dollar amount or more than 5% in percent variances are considered high. As you can see here, none of the variances in revenue are large by a dollar amount, and the ones that are high by percentage represent about 7% of our total revenue. So on the revenue side, we're very much on target. The expenditures personnel ran $3.7 million over for the month, and we're now just $6.8 million under for the year. So that means we were about $10.5 million under last month. Uh, I explained to the committee that we're seeing that gap narrow as actuals creep closer and closer to the plan, and uh, as Various items have been added into personnel, um, the results of collective bargaining and some additional staff. Uh, we may see that variance narrow a little bit more. Purchase services has been uh, the perennial uh, leader in terms of being underplanned. In the non-personnel area, about $1.1 million for the month and $6 million year to date. Community schools, uh, probably the second largest category of expenditures. Uh, not much change from last month, and they are running $1.2 million underplanned. We did discuss an accounting entry for the county auditor's refund, as you may have read in the paper. The uh, county auditor chose this year to issue us a refund out of the real estate assessment fund. Typically, those had been done every four years, um, coincidentally. 
Uh, but this particular new county auditor has decided to try and do those refunds on an annual basis. And we talked about an accounting treatment of that, and I'm soliciting some other, uh, other uh, opinions as to how that should be reported. Currently, we recorded it as a negative expenditure rather than a revenue item since it was more current. But I'm checking with my colleagues as well as the auditors to state to see if there's a, a better rationale or more consistent way. So we'll get back to that. I will report out um, to the Finance Committee next month. Um, again, here's a graphic representation. Uh, and again, I take the two largest categories, personnel and charter representing 90% of our year-to-date expenditures, and they're running at about a 2.3% 2, 2 variance uh, under plan, about $8 million. Uh, the variance uh, look here, uh, you can see the personnel is high in dollar amount, but low in percentage, and uh, it dropped because of that narrowing of the variance. It now dropped below 5%, so we're getting much closer there. Purchase services, I said, will run high in both categories. Um, everything else is, is pretty pretty small variances, even though they might be high in percent variances. Other than that, um, revenue's up, expenditures are down, and uh, we're pretty much on, on target. Uh, and that concludes my report to the board and to the two of you for the last time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Uh, any questions, colleagues? Treasurer, thank you for your service. More than welcome. And let's move on then to uh, item 8.1, 8 approval to attend a professional development conference. And so um, is there a motion to adopt this? And then we'll hear any discussion there might be. Is there a motion for 8.1? Moved. Moved and seconded. Board Member Reyes. Discussion on item 8.1? Anyone? Board Member Raglan? So um, I'd like to know if we have other members of the administration that will be attending this conference. Um, Superintendent or internal auditor or treasurer, do you have any team members who are attending the Advocacy Institute or the Equity Symposium the first week of February? No. I do not. I do not. This one is, this event is typically one that is for Board members. Board members. Mm -hmm. And what is the purpose of the event itself, the conference? Excuse me. So it's it's, to, it's structured so that um, on that it's, it's three days. The one day um, Saturday is usually for board members, and they're discussing issues around equity from other school districts. And then the next two days is the advocacy piece where you're meeting with other board members and you're talking to your legislators and you're also going to the Hill. Um, so it is for board members' engagement around um, those topics. I um, joined um, in the former district my team before um, on this conference. And it's a very good conference, but it wasn't for uh, superintendents. But I just went just to go for the first time with my with my board. But it's I think it really gives a um, a local and a statewide context to those subjects, um, and it really gets you in the room with other people who have um, equity and advocacy as agendas as well. So I think it would be a conference worth going to. I know um, we are part of Council of Great City Schools, so there's something that's similar um, that Council of Great City Schools does as well in DC. Um, this one gives you really local context with people in, in the state. And that was the reason why I suggested and thought that we did for the board members to see who else is working um, in Ohio on these two, two topics. Certainly. And for the public, what, what is the total cost of the professional development opportunity? I believe the approximate... reach that amount that you see on this So, and then the conference itself is around equity. Um, can I have a summarized explanation of mm -hmm. why this district does not have a current equity policy in our policy manual? Um, Mr. Ragland, I will, um, I could 
refer you to the chair of the policy review committee. I know that they are taking up an equity policy and will be contemplating it at the PRC. Uh, I believe the chairman intends to do that uh, in very short order. I'm, I'm asking about the policy that was allowed to lapse in 2016, specifically. And is your question your main to this piece of legislation? Yes, the trip itself concerns equity. We have a policy that we have had in place for this district for three years that was allowed to lapse in 2016. We're now asking the public to send a board member to an equity conference on the public's dime. I'd like to know what happened to the equity policy that was on place on our books at the end of the district and fell off in 2016 before we asked the public to spend their resources to send a board member. We, as you know, as you know, we undertook. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, President Baker. Ms. Gibbs, do you have a comment? Oh, sure, yeah. Ms. Gibbs? I, I just want to ask a point of clarification because in 2016, um, the equity policy, when we revamped policy governance, we sunsetted all of our policies and, and under the auspices of creating the policy review committee, we were going to bring back all of the policies after they were reviewed. We've asked policy review to look at equity policy since we came back from CUBE, and I think that was about 2015. So we've offered to the policy review committee to bring us back. And if I'm correct, maybe a meeting or two ago, we had the policy and it was tabled. I'm not sure why it was tabled, but we were about to vote to reinstate the equity policy. And from, I wasn't at that meeting. I was um, supporting my nephew, Elijah Barber. Um, but from what I understand, y'all tabled it and that it didn't move forward. So if there is an equity policy right now in draft form that if you want to put on the table to pass, we can get that done today. But that's my understanding. But let me speak to how great that uh, the symposium is. The, the equity symposium is a part of the National School Board Association. And it is a part of, um, it's the precursor to the Federal Relations Network Advocacy Institute. They, the equity policy in attending this um, is not an either or. It can be a both and because regardless of we, if we have a policy or not, we have to address equity every single day. So the district isn't waiting on us because equity happens every day in discipline and transportation and our academic offerings and the work that is being taken up right now in our Phi Delta Kappa audit in the portrait of a graduate and the work that we're doing every day to ensure that we are moving the equity button every single day. So this equity symposium that they added a few years ago to the Advocacy Institute is a way for you to network with other districts. What is Kansas doing? What is Detroit doing? What is San Antonio doing? How are we navigating equity amongst us? So it's set in policy review, but there is a policy I'm sure that we can, and next board can take up because it's already been vetted in draft, but the next day of the Advocacy Institute is for the board appointed attendee to attend. Um, the Ohio School Board Association appoints the member to the Federal Relations Network, and they represent Columbus City Schools, and it is their appointment to attend, and that's where we meet with the U.S. Secretary of Education for the House, for the Senate, for um, the Speaker, and you meet with the federal um, mm -hmm. members of Congress that are over education, and we discuss the national legislation that is coming down the pike that will impact so the Equity Symposium is the Saturday, and the Federal Relations Network kicks off that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and you go to the Hill when you lobby our um, congressional delegation. We are very fortunate that we have a very close relationship with our delegation with um, Congresswoman Joyce Beatty, um, and, and in some places, Steve Stivers or Troy Botterson. And then we have a congressional breakfast with both um, Rob Portman and Senator Sherrod Brown. And so that federal relation, we bring our specific concerns for our district to our legislators right there on the Hill. And we talk about how they will impact Ohio. Our staff, our legislative team under um, Dr. John Stanford and Eric Roush prepares briefings for us, for us to make sure we are um, advocating for those specific uh, legislative items that um, impact Columbus City, where the funding, IDA, the Perkins, um, we passed ES. ESSA, um, we were very uh, glad to get that done federally, but there's still so much work 
And while, uh, as you know, Capitol Hill is not without its uh, activities these days, the work of school district must be born. And so this board can take that up, but um, it's, it's, anyone can attend the Advocacy Institute, but the Federal Relations Network is for the Ohio School Board appointed um, person and another person to attend, but that person goes to the district. That's the answer. That's right. Thank you very much for a very thorough explanation. I, I believe that my concern is more local than it is federal at this level um, because I've asked for several specific explanations as to why the policy was allowed to lapse, and I understand it has something to do with Leola and, uh, and policy governance and all of that. But to me, if the policy was allowed to lapse and then it was not taken back up in three years. That means that the policy wasn't implemented for three years. And I hear the importance of equity being spoken around this table. And I've heard it throughout the entire full year uh, that I've been here. I was told as a member of the policy review committee that we did not have an equity policy. When asked for information to get to look at concerning a potential equity policy, I was given policy from Seattle. That was prior to me joining the board. And so what happens to those that fell victim to not having an equity policy from 2016 to 2019? And then to turn around and ask the taxpayer to pay for a trip on this after we could have had an equity policy in place and continue and then go and talk about what we have based off what our policy is. There's just so much misunderstanding around how it happened. There was some deliberate misinformation being given around how it happened. And for me, um, this is all wrapped up into an equity discussion because of the specificity of this trip, because the destination is such where we're going to be talking equity specifically and you know I, I i want us to be careful that when we make these decisions that we don't just make them and that their consequences become out of sight and out of mind oh we just get a redo no children were negatively impacted by the fact that we let an equity policy lapse and did not bring it back up for three years so why didn't policy review bring it to us in three years Policy Gibbs. review that did bring the point of the board. Uh, Ms. Gibbs, Vice policy President. Policy review did bring it. Vice President Cole was next. Um, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate this conversation. I appreciate the fact that um, equity has been something that we have not just talked about. It has not been a hyperbolic exercise in academia for this board or for our organization entirely. Um, what I will say is this is where there was that loss on the part of Neola. And this re-engagement of a policy discussion on the committee that you are a part of, well, what we're doing and what we have been doing is behaving equity in this district. And one distinct example I can certainly give on behalf of our district and our administration is the work that we've done with behavior in this district, with restorative practices. This is a district with a board that saw opportunity to create greater wealth of presence to make sure that students were in class, that students are staying in school buildings, that we're not making the first effort to expel or suspend a student, that we're taking aggressive and assertive steps towards ensuring that there are people on hand to provide social emotional supports for youngsters. We made a commitment to that effort uh, that we went to the community and asked them to fund. And we have been, we've, we've been in fidelity with that activity. With that in mind, again, I respectfully understand uh, your concern. I respectfully uh, accept this conversation. But given the business that we have to convene, and I think that uh, uh, Board Member Adair has some additional comment, but I'd like to call for the question, Mr. President. So, okay. The question has been called. Is there a second? Second. I moved in second. Comments made. Well, I have the, earlier indicated my interest. I beg your pardon. Uh, but the question has been called, it's been seconded, and you, as you know, that's not debatable. Mr. Treasurer? 
I had questions. Mr. Brown. I had comments to make prior. Mr. Brown. I, I had indicated that. I apologize. I didn't see you. You're out of order at this point. Uh, Mr. Treasurer, would you call the roll and call the question? Mr. Brown? No. Vice I've President. got some things to say. Vice President Cole? Yes. Ms. Gibbs? Yes. Mr. Ragland? No. Ms. Reyes? Yes. Ms. Adair? Yes. President Baker? Yes. I've still got some things to say, and I'd like to be recognized as I should have been earlier. Mr. Brown, you're out of order. And you can recognize me now. Mr. Brown, I choose not to. You will have an opportunity to speak during PRC and at subsequent board meetings, and I know you will. Thank you very much. Let's move on to our consent. That's agenda. disrespectful. Mr. And Brown, that's how you want to end your board service. Mr. Brown, with all due respect, you are out of order. Oh, you're not respectful. Mr. Brown, that concludes your remarks. No, it doesn't. Actually, it does. Thank you. We are moving on now President to President Baker, action. pardon me. First of all, that motion carried. Yeah, thank you, two-thirds vote. That motion carried. Thank you. Secondly, the call of the question means we have to immediately move to a roll call on item 8.1, uh, the board legislation, to attend to conference. Yes. I, I, you were, I thought you were moving on to the consent no, agenda. No, no. You're not done yet. No, I just want you to okay. call the roll on 8.1. I will do that. Okay, um, Vice President Cole. Yes. Ms. Gibbs. Yes. Mr. Ragland. No. Ms. Reyes. Yes. Ms. Adair. Yes. President Baker. Yes. Mr. Brown. No. The motion carried. Thank you, colleagues. Let's move on to our consent agenda, item nine. Any questions or comments on any piece of legislation contained within the consent agenda this evening? I do know that Mr. Ragland has an extension. You mentioned to me earlier. Thank you very much. Um, any other comments, questions? Also, I have an extension from Ms. Gibbs on item 12.3. And if there's nothing else, I'll ask for a motion that we adopt the consent agenda. So moved. All right. Mr. Treasurer. Okay. Ms. Gibbs? Yes. Except 12.3. 12.3, you abstain. Mr. Ragland? Yes, with the exception of 18.1, from which I abstain. Ms. Reyes? Yes. Ms. Adair? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Vice President Cole? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Um, colleagues, one of the things that you just approved was board committee report. And one of you, a committee chair, did indicate that you'd like to present a PowerPoint presentation related to your committee report. And I only heard from one of you. And we only have uh, one PowerPoint presentation. Unless any of the rest of you would like to uh, present. Uh, board Member Gibbs, Innovation and Reform. You have it? Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Brown, patience. Not to a surprise. Not to a surprise. Innovation and reform. <laughs> Your battery is running. President Baker, Vice President Cole, members of the board, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present my final innovation and re reform report. I start with thanking Dr. John Stanford for his stalwart commitment and support to our committee and for the work he's done on behalf of innovation and reform. As you know, our, our mission is to serve as a two-way committee. So the idea is that there's any ideas, any um, thought leaders, if there's something that we know that we hear from conferences and our partnership with the Great City Schools, with the Ohio School Board Association or the National School Board Association, we can gather and discuss them and pull together the emerging trends and best practices and discuss the feasibility of how they can work in Columbus City Schools. 
and that leverages our partnerships and our benefits um, into that work. And how do they come to life? Um, we have an idea presented to innovation and reform. Um, the superintendent then um, reviews it. We talk about those recommendations. Um, we, we recommend an innovation or an idea to be implemented at the board and then it starts all over. And then the board decides to pursue it or says, we don't think it's feasible for Columbus City. Those ideas include, um, we've talked about drug testing student athletes. We've talked about um, different bail times. We've talked about different uh, restorative practices. Some of those ideas have moved forward in Columbus City Schools and some of them we thought we were already um, operating in the best practice. So our goal again is to establish an ongoing system to receive, review, and recommend new plans of actions that helps our students succeed. Our 2019 progress, and you saw him earlier, he just came in. Um, in 2019, we took up a school redesign and a feasibility study from our Nashville site visit. We talked about our academic surge, which was very successful. Um, and help move our students in our district up a level from our state standards. Um, we explored our discipline and suspension and expulsion data in light of the new state law that prohibits you from suspending kids in pre-K-3. We talked about what happens in grade four, five, and six. If we stop suspending kids, what, what is the impact on those other grades? And we had an ideal carousel presented um, by Mr. Jeff Stewart who is an alum and a parent in this district who talked about the Columbus City School Hall of Fame, academic uh, and advanced college pathways by Ms. Alicia Gillison, and middle school reform initiatives by Ms. Diane Agnes. We talked about those ideas and how they would uh, impact Columbus City Schools. Dr. Dixon gave us her 100-day report and spent that with our committee. And we talked about um, onboarding the portrait of a graduate with Mattel for Kids. So both board member Jennifer Adair and board member Jim Ragland James Raglan are a part of the committee and have been a part of our meetings. And as I sunset, they will take over the committee and explore the ideas and how these ideas can um, come to life in Columbus City. So my closing thoughts are this. Here are some hot ideas that are still on the hopper, right? Free cap and gown for all high school students. Um, we have districts that pay that cost. We don't know if we can do it here in Columbus, but um, what happens if we pay, if that's our highest um, idea. If that's what we want them to do, removing the financial barrier and they just pay the rest of the senior cost. The second is the ongoing discipline report for grades four through eight. Um, we can't suspend kids pre-K through three, but what happens in grade four? And making sure we have the professional development for our staff and our parents on making sure they understand how they navigate that. We talked about an academic curriculum audit and Dr. Dixon has already gotten that underway with Phi Delta Kappa. We talked about the school lottery and the fidelity of our programs. Uh, we talked about special education and are we preparing our students for life skills? Will they be prepared um, as we're preparing students to go to college or go to work? How will our special ed students navigate that process of um, post high school life? We talked about a citywide attendance campaign that came from um, one of our conferences and I, Dr. Dixon shaking her head because that's something we are going to um, look at in the future. And finally, high school redesign. How do we get more theme-based options for our school? And so we are um, very excited about that work. And um, we thank everybody and all of the hundreds of community members that are a part of it. If there's anyone here, past or present, on innovation and reform, would you please stand? Would you all please stand? Thank you so much for your service. We appreciate your work and all that you do. And that's innovation and reform. And finally, Board External Monitoring Committee. Um, the Board External Monitoring Committee uh, was formed as an advisory um, council to help us officially and effectively govern the district. They, uh, they monitor us. There are reports about our governance, our conduct, our timeliness, the way we navigate our agenda. And um, I will be happy to own, give that to you, Vice President Cole, to uh, facilitate as the next team comes on. We'll give you those reports and you'll be able to navigate that. I am extremely grateful to Mr. Ari Tolls. Ari, please stand up. He attends every single school board meeting. Thank you, Mr. Ari Tolls, proud graduate of the Columbus Alternative High School and on the staff of The Ohio State University and for the 
2019-2020 year, he'll be joined by Mr. Philip Calloway as the other observer. He has a program at Indianola with his daughter today, but he is the other part of the team, and there are two more waiting for you to interview and appoint for the next chair of that committee. So thank you for the Board of External Monitoring Report. And um, President Baker, that concludes my report. Are there any questions? Thank you. Questions on committee reports, okay. colleagues? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Gibbs. Let's move on then to announcements. Announcements? Points of pride? Mr. Brown. Yes. One of the items that I wanted to talk about and to uh, discuss with the board uh, is very much focused on equity and I am very interested in seeing this board and this school district focus on the work of equity, not necessarily just a policy. Um, I think we need to focus on the work and that's not accomplished in my mind by sending a single board member to a single equity symposium. However, there is an opportunity. It wasn't until uh, this afternoon that I sent some information to all of you. Um, you may not have seen it yet, but it's awaiting you in your uh, email. Uh, but Franklin County uh, has been very interested in pursuing uh, equity training and the work that's necessary to achieve equity. And uh, they have engaged a, an organization called the Racial Equity Institute based in North Carolina. It is a, a very well-regarded organization nationally. And uh, Franklin County officials have already done what this organization offers in a two-day workshop. And uh, my wife, who has been through much of this kind of work through her career uh, in Greater Cleveland and, and elsewhere, uh, has been through it and speaks very, very highly of the work that's done. Uh, Joy Bivens is probably not here any longer. She was earlier uh, as part of the, the Deltas and for some other reasons of uh, honoring Ms. Gibbs. But uh, she is uh, one of the folks in the county who is helping to lead this. <coughs> the two-day training is, is incredibly good. With the county's encouragement and support, um, CODA is now doing the training. The city of Columbus has agreed to do the training. Key leaders from the nonprofit community in Columbus have done the training, and many, many more will be. Uh, the business community is also uh, very interested. Franklin County desires to become a partner with REI to leverage the work. Uh, that's an approach that Cleveland took, and they've had a at least a half a dozen or more organizations there uh, do this. It's a great opportunity. Uh, just as an example, the two-day training workshop that they offer at a cost of about eleven dollars or $12,000 plus expenses for the two-day workshop can serve 40 or 45 participants. And I think it's a much better way to leverage an investment Franklin County, and I'm allowed to say this, will, is, has offered to help with the cost. Uh, this is something that they're rolling out uh, everywhere, and uh, I've given you both a link to the site and uh, a write-up on the workshop, and uh, it's uh, at least a, a good part of my answer to uh, doing something different. We've had board members attend Equity, train, equity workshops and symposiums in the past. Um, obviously, we've still got lots of work to do. This would allow us to approach this work in a big way, in a meaningful way, and for a lot of uh, bang for the buck. Uh, so it's just something I want to get out there for consideration uh, and thought and to look at. It happens to be a already own business and uh, as well and uh, 
there may be other approaches, but I wanted to get this one out for consideration. Mr. Brown, thank you. I was reading the email you sent earlier. It looks very interesting. I, I would definitely encourage uh, the 2020 board and the administration to, to seriously consider that. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing that to our attention, Mr. Brown. Uh, board Member Rand. Yes, sir. Thank you, President Baker. Two things tonight I would like to thank. Department for the Engage to Empower Symposium that took place on December 4th at Oakley for Gospel Baptist Church. I'd also like to thank uh, Vice President Cole for uh, his attendance there. It was a very well attended event, rousing, rousing reading discussion uh, with a lot of community and faith leaders uh, that were there and taking work back into uh, their houses of worship based on uh, what our staff provided them. I got really good feedback. Appreciate uh, the work that, that Ms. Judy Wright and Ms. Gillison are doing uh, to put those things in motion. Uh, we will have another starting at the turn of the year, and so be on the lookout for that. And then, secondly, I'd like to thank uh, Principal Ed Baker, Coach Tim Brown, and the eighth grade boys at Columbus South uh, for for their work and engagement. They welcomed in uh, the newly minted Ohio State Buckeyes, uh, Big Ten champions. Uh, Master Teague was there, Nick Petit, and Trey Wilburn uh, all came, and they had a very good forum discussion. Uh, the Buckeyes were actually on finals week, but our young men at South were able to uh, take in a lot of good advice around academia, uh, around good character, and, and really showing uh, you know each other as peers how they can be better young men. And so thank you to Coach Brown and the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, and Principal Baker for the work that they are doing over at Columbus South. Thank you, Mr. Buck. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Uh, Board Member Reyes, did I see your hand up? Uh, well, I just uh, had a question, uh, Mr. Baker. I didn't know um, it was in our agenda to uh, farewells to both of you, so I didn't know if you were going to give us that opportunity, but um, I can hold on that. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of, um, I'm looking forward to your report, uh, Board Member Cole. Um, I was fortunate to go to uh, the Advocacy Institute. So um, uh, what that provided me the opportunity to do is learn what are the policies, uh, what are the changes that are occurring that impact our district, that impact urban districts, and uh, that are, sometimes are overlooked. And I had the opportunity to um, see not only what we wanted to advocate for that impacted us here in Columbus, locally, but some of the bigger federal uh, policies that uh, uh, impact urban school districts as a whole. Um, so I just, I just want to make sure that we don't, that uh, your report comes back with, I know that it says equity symposium, but it also really concentrates as a formal FRN member, really uh, focuses on the lobbying piece of the, what's affecting our schools, what's impacting our schools, what's going to change, uh, and to hear the voices of I, I believe it was 15,000 school board members in the room um, uh, being not very happy about some of the uh, changes coming in when you get to see the, have the Secretary of uh, Education come in the room and hear from us directly saying how unfavorable we are with some of the things that they were passing at the time, uh, and still passing, uh, that uh, hinder us from moving forward. Uh, I'm looking forward to that report. Okay. Uh, board member Gibbs. Take an opportunity before y'all start saying your farewells to us. Um, President Baker and I discussed this um, a couple of weeks back, and we are just internally grateful for all of the staff and all of the work that all of you do. But there is a person um, who is the glue in the tape that keeps us together. And no matter how difficult it may be, she is genuine. She is always patient, always kind, always encouraging, and always special. Miss Tina Wilson-McClure, will you Yay. come forward, please? Yeah. 
Miss Tina, you are the bomb dot com. Miss Tina <laughs> is the quiet voice behind all that we do, anywhere that we go and anywhere we want to be. And you do it with grace and style, tact and diplomacy, and always have an encouraging word and something wonderful to share with us. We are going to miss you. I, I, I'm not going to know where I'm supposed to be for two or three weeks unless Miss Tina calls me. And so I, I love you. I love your spirit. And I love everything that you give to us. The board, you are lucky to have a Miss Tina. And I, I'm just overwhelmed with your love and your support. Thank you. Come take a picture of this. <laughs> All this paper, all this foolishness. <coughs> all right. Any other any other announcements or points of pride before we get to the uh, special recognition? Uh, all right. At the end of each school board year, school board session, uh, calendar year, president offers end of year remarks. I want to thank all of you who helped to add information to the end of year report. It is brief, and I will just read it um, very quickly. Thank you. December is often a time of reflection as we contemplate our work as a Board of Education and we consider the progress we've achieved as a district during the past 12 months in service to our students, families, employees, and community partners. This December is somewhat bittersweet for me as it will be my final reflection as Board President. First of all, I must thank all of our direct reports, Internal Auditor Smith, Treasurer Bohorek, and of course our Dr. Dixon, who officially took the reins to become the 21st superintendent of Clemson Schools this year for their hard work and dedication during 2019. As the board governs, you three manage the operations of the district. I must also thank our teachers, administrators, and all of our amazing district employees for continuing to make Columbus City Schools the outstanding place it is to work and learn. You all are the heart and soul of our district and the ones having the most direct impact on the lives of our students and their families. And for that, we as a board are grateful. Uh, thanks, obviously, to the leadership of CEA and OPSI and CSCSA and CAA. Uh, your leadership and your partnership is critically important to the success of the district. From our first meeting in January, we've remained true to our shared vision that this district be a world-class model of public education that prepares members of our communities to reach their full potential. As superintendent, Dr. Dixon started her tenure with a 100-day listening tour to hear from teachers, staff, students, community partners, civic leaders, and others. Dr. Dixon has remained engaged with the Columbus community and has taken the feedback she received along with the board input to lead a reorganization and a reinvigoration of the district. Together, we've strived to create an environment that supports academic achievement, continuous improvement, and lifelong learning. Under the direction of the superintendent, we've set forth an educational visioning process through a partnership with Patel for Kids. The process will continue through the end of the school year as the community comes together to share its hopes, dreams, and aspirations for all students. We continue as a board to govern with integrity, with a focus on academic achievement, demonstrating compassion, respect, and trust, and valuing community engagement and empowerment. Over the past 12 months, this body's come together for 34 meetings, regular and special, another 36 committee meetings. We've approved more than 870 resolutions, contracts, recognitions, recommendations, pieces of legislation, and almost always voted unanimously. And speaking of, of uh, Ms. Wilson, she counted. It was 876 pieces of legislation that we passed during the year. Thank you. 
2019 has been a year of growth for the district, and the board has worked diligently and deliberately to forge the path forward. This year has been no different than any other year in that tough, sometimes unpopular decisions had to be made. We continue to make tough choices, allowing us to maintain a balanced budget. We've recommitted ourselves to safe and secure schools, and we've continued to advocate for adequate and constitutional funding of education in our state, as well as weighing in frequently on issues impacting our students, such as the state report card and graduation requirements. With the recommendation of the superintendent, we added 31 more safety and security officers across the officers the district. Safety is a high priority for Columbus City Schools and we wanted to strengthen our safety and security measures through strategic staffing, training, and analysis. Our safety and security staff not only keep our buildings secure, but they help create warm, welcoming environments that are conducive to teaching and learning. As we talk about growth, the growth of our students academically is improving. Columbus City Schools saw a letter grade improvement on its overall score in addition to gains made across various components on its 2019 Ohio State Report Card. Overall, the district scored a D on its 2019 Report Card. The district made its biggest gains on the gap closing component, which measures how well schools are meeting the performance expectations for the most vulnerable populations of students in the areas of English, language, arts, math, and graduation. The district moved from an F to a B uh, in one school year on that component. In fact, among Ohio's eight largest urban school districts, Columbus City Schools outpaced the others in gap closing as one of only two urban districts to score a B on that component. The district also made strides in its graduation rate, earning a D on both its four and five year cohort rates. The Columbus City Schools Career and Technical Education Program earned a B for both its four year and five year graduation rate. The Career Tech Program also achieved an A on the post program placement component. We were second, in fact, only to Youngstown in the four year graduation rate. Second to Cleveland in its five year cohort rate. I'm encouraged by these results, and five of our schools have the distinct honor to be recognized by the State Board of Education for outstanding progress and student growth shown on the state report card. Mifflin Middle School was one of 71 schools across the state and one of just five in Franklin County to be recognized as a high progress school of honor. Burroughs Elementary, absolutely. Cause, Columbus Spanish Immersion Academy and Watkins Elementary were among 173 schools in the state, including 27 in Franklin County, to receive the Momentum Award. I'm proud of the actions that this board took to ensure that these results are possible. The board will continue, I assume, to advocate for our students and take the right steps to ensure that these improvements continue. Finally, to ensure that we retain the best teachers in the state, the Board of Education voted unanimously in August to approve a three-year contract agreement with the Columbus Association, CEA, the union representing the district's 4,000 teachers, nurses, counselors, social workers, and other education professionals. As we look ahead, the sustainable, positive trajectory in Columbus City Schools will set the stage for our next stories of success in 2020 to be written as our superintendent continues to make positive changes that will lead all of our students on the path to success with your support. Colleagues, you've advanced that shared vision and have helped to keep the district on the path to being a world-class model of public education we all want and our students and families and communities so richly deserve. Thank you all for your service to the district here in 2019. And it's in the faces and the stories of our 50,000 students that I see young people ready to reach their full potential. I'm encouraged by the strides district has made this year as we all work collectively as a team to ensure positive academic trajectories for each and every student in Columbus City Schools. I look forward to watching from the other side all of the success that I know Columbus City Schools will continue to have in the years to come. I thank you very much. Thank you colleagues. Thank you. I also want to thank I also don't want to not thank, um, I think he's here, Deputy Superintendent John Stanford. Please stand up, who led us for part of the year. Thank you very much, Dr. Stanford. Stand up. He, he's another one of those guys that doesn't want to be recognized, but he works so hard. Um, I also want to recognize interim uh, City Director of Education, Matt Smido, for your partnership during the last few months. So thank you very much.
And if there's nothing else as far as announcements or points of pride, let's move on to our last part of our meeting. I'm going to call on Vice President Cole. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, I want to take the opportunity to do a couple of things. First and foremost, Jesse, I beg your pardon. I noticed former Vice President Brian Stewart came in ah, a little yes. bit earlier. Thank you. And um, he, he and I communicated earlier, and I didn't know if he wanted to say anything. I don't want to put him on the spot, but I will. Uh, Vice President Stewart, if you would like to share any remarks. There were a lot of other speakers up front. You missed that. So if you'd like to come to the podium, just show, share a few very quick remarks. Thank you, sir. <laughs> very nice to see you. First of all, it's nice to see you all. Thank you, uh, board member, uh, all the board members, uh, board president uh, uh, Baker, and also Vice President Cole, uh, Madam Superintendent, and uh, everyone who is here. It is an honor to stand before you. Um, it is a very difficult job, as you now know, many of you, um, to sit in the position and seats that you're in. And obviously, I've had an opportunity to do that. Uh, these two individuals have done it, and they did it with class. They did it with excellence. Uh, and, um, you know, we go through a lot when we're in these seats. So you get a chance to see the integrity of people. These are two integrity people, two people who have a lot of integrity, who care about our kids, who care about this district, and most of all, care about the community. I want to congratulate you both on a successful run. I'm excited to see what your future will, will bring. And thank you so much. It was an honor to serve with both of you. And thank you all for everything that you all do. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I also wanted to recognize, I saw State School Board member Antoinette Miranda earlier. And I just wanted to recognize you. Thank you for being here this evening. Is Lynn May here from Dublin? Lynn May, one of my favorite board members. Hi. Lynn May is a board member from Dublin, past president for many years of Dublin. Is Carlton Weddington here? Oh, hello, sir. Good evening. All right. Is there anybody else I should be recognizing that I'm not? Okay. All right. Vice President Cole, I beg your pardon. Thank you very much. No worries. No worries. I'm certainly worthy of that recognition. Um, the first thing I wanted to take the opportunity to do on behalf of uh, this august body of leaders here is offer two resolutions. Um, these two resolutions acknowledge both the service of W. Shawna Gibbs as well as Board President Gary Baker. I'd like the opportunity to read through them both. Um, to honor W. Shawna Gibbs for her outstanding dedication and public service to the Columbus City School District, whereas W. Shawna Gibbs is a proud graduate of the Columbus Alternative High School, Clark Atlanta University, and is a longtime resident of the city of Columbus. And whereas W. Shona Gibbs is a seasoned and experienced champion for this city's children and families, and has made enormous contributions to public education, children advocacy, and student achievement. And whereas W. Shona Gibbs was first elected to the Columbus Board of Education in 2007, and whereas W. Shawna Gibbs was re-elected two more times in 2011 and 2015 to serve a total of 12 years on the Board of Education. But we know that number is 13. 13. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll handle that. We'll move to a minute. Uh, whereas W. Shawna Gibbs was elected by her peers to serve as Board Vice President in 2013, and whereas the district established nearly 2,100 pre-kindergarten seats and transitioned into the city's leader in high-quality early childhood education during the tenure of the board. And whereas W. Shona Gibbs served as board of trustee of I Know I Can and the Ohio School Boards Association. And whereas W. Shona Gibbs is a member of the All Ohio School Board and earned her master school board member designation in 2019. And whereas W. Shona Gibbs continues to have a strong leadership presence in the Shirley Chisholm Conference for Girls in Government, the Dr. Alexa Kennedy, uh, Kennedy excuse me, Conference for Future Doctors and Dentists, and the Morning of Hope 
for teen suicide prevention programs. And whereas W. Shona Gibbs helped charter the first Columbus Urban League Young Professionals Association. And whereas W. Shona Gibbs served on the executive board and as a member of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And whereas the recognition is a small token of appreciation with the dedication and public service to the Columbus community and to the school district. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Columbus Board of Education honors W. Shawna Gibbs for her dedication and years of service to the Columbus City School District. And be it further resolved that Columbus Board of Education urges all Columbus residents to join the board in celebrating and expressing our gratitude for the outstanding service of board member W. Shawna Gibbs to the students and families of Columbus City Schools for 13 years. That's a motion, and is there a second? Okay. Discussion? Mr. Treasurer? Mr. Rag? Yes. Ms. Reyes? Yes. Ms. Adair? Yes. Mr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Vice President Cole? Absolutely, yes. Ms. Gibbs? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Mr. Vice President? Mr. President, I'd like to offer a second resolution. In acknowledgement and honoring your board leadership and service to this community. To honor Gary L. Baker II for his outstanding dedication and public service to the Columbus City School District. Whereas Gary L. Baker II is a proud graduate of Audubon University and is a longtime resident of the City of Columbus. And whereas Gary L. Baker II is a seasoned and experienced champion for this city, neighborhood development, children and families, and has made enormous contributions to public education, neighborhood preservation, and student achievement. And whereas Gary L. Baker II was first elected to the Columbus Board of Education in 2007. And whereas Gary L. Baker was re-elected two, two more times in 2011 and 2015 to serve a total of 12 years on the Columbus Board of Education. And whereas Gary L. Baker II was unanimously elected by his peers to serve as board president for the first time in 2014. And whereas Gary L. Baker II was re-elected by his colleagues to serve as the board president five more times in 2015, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Whereas Gary L. Baker II was part of the leadership team to lead two successful levies in 2012 <laughs> and 2016. And whereas the district's graduation rate steadily improved each year during his term as president, as board president, to the current rate of 82.1%. Folks, that's 1% higher than the national average. Uh, whereas Gary L. Baker II serves as the president of the Franklin County School Board Member Alliance, and as a longtime member of the Ohio School Boards Association, the National School Boards Association, the Council of Urban Schools of Boards of Education, and ex officio member of the I Know I Can Board of Trustees. And whereas Gary L. Baker II is serving his sixth year as a member of the Board of Directors for the Council of Great City Schools. And whereas Gary L. Baker II served as a member of Kamako's West Side Action Center Advisory Board, Community Crime Patrol Board, the Homes on the Hill CDC Board, the J. Ashburn Jr. Youth Center Board, the Highland West Civic Association Board, and the Friends of Columbus Metropolitan Board. And whereas Gary L. Baker II served as a member of the Columbus Urban League, Uptown Progressives, and Columbus Shamrock Club. And whereas Gary L. Baker II will end his 12-year tender, tenure with the Columbus Board of Education on December 31st, 2019. And now, therefore, be resolved. The Columbus Board of Education honors Gary L. Baker II for his dedication and years of service to the Columbus City School District. And be it further resolved that the Columbus Board of Education urges all Columbus residents to join the board in celebrating, celebrating and ex expressing our gratitude for the outstanding service of the board leadership of that Gary L. Baker II to the students and families of Columbus City Schools for 12 years. Mr. President. Moved and seconded. 
Hearing no discussion, Mr. Treasurer? Ms. Reyes? Yes. Ms. Adair? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Vice President Cole? Yes. Ms. Gibbs? Yes. And Mr. Raglan? Yes. That motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you, colleagues. Um, I wanted to take the next step. Um, I wanted to make sure I acknowledge some very special people. Um, Board Member Reyes uh, and I and staff, Dr. Stafford, Dr. Gixon, um, Mr. Olden, uh, Ms. Misty Nichols. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't see. And, oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Tina Wilson. Uh, for all of their work, their hard work behind the scenes and working with us to ensure that we teed up this opportunity for you and host this meeting. Um, I'll, I'll reserve my comments for last, but I first wanted the opportunity to acknowledge your service through what is now this plaque uh, that is presented to you with a gold gavel. <laughs> Thank you, sir. In addition, in addition, each of you have received a plaque that has your resolution today that was adopted by them for your service. Wow. Thank, you. Thank you. Now, Mr. President, if you'll indulge me, uh, Sister Gibbs, if you'll indulge me, um, I'd like to offer the opportunity for some parting words by our esteemed colleague. Yes, sir. <laughs> the order. Um, I want to say thank you to both you, Gary, and Shauna. I've known you both for a long time, and I've known you in different capacities, through community service um, and, and being out in the community. I really believe that each of us brings something very special to the seats that we serve. We bring us, and no one can replace you. And each of you have done something very important here in your time serving our children in our district. Shauna, you bring a touch of community. You are out, I don't know what we're gonna do, honestly, because you are out and about everywhere. You are really the face of the board, interacting with the public, uh, letting them know that we are accessible and real, that they can touch and talk to us. Um, and, and you bring such a value in, in that perspective. And Gary, you are a connector. You help us at a national level and a state level, connecting us on high to other districts. Um, in your service with great um, the, the Council of Great City Schools and, and all of the things that you've done is also very valuable. I know that those people would have come if only they got plane tickets to Columbus today. Um, but your service uh, is so important in that respect. And so each of us brings something very special and unique to the seats that we serve. Um, and I know both of you have done that. And I know public service is something very near and dear to your heart. And I know that you will not stop doing it, even though you will not be sitting at this table with us any longer. Um, just know that each of you has left a legacy. Um, each of you has left your mark on this district. Each of you has touched a child, not literally touched, but touched in a way that <laughs> impacts them and the future of their, their dreams and their hopes. And so I just want to thank you. I want to thank each of you for being a personal friend and mentor to me. Um, and thank you for laying the groundwork for the hard work we have as a board to go forward, um, to lay a foundation for us to even move higher and stronger together. So... Thank you all. And I know that, honestly, like like what Lois said, we, we're not really going to let you go. We'll, we'll find something for you to do. <laughs> Thank you. Next. Mr. Brown. Sure. Uh, I, too, join in thanking you and commending you for many years of very fine public service, both of you. Uh, public service is, is something that I know it's important to me, and I see you both uh, have stepped up and participated and engaged in uh, what is truly important work. Uh, and I, I really appreciate that, and I thank you. 
whether there are times we don't agree or times that we do agree is beside the point. Uh, I think that school boards need a good mix of people, and we've had that. And I think that will continue to be important going forward. But uh, far too few people uh, are willing to step up and engage in, in public service as you both have. And uh, I think it's important to think that uh, uh, it's something that the community uh, values and appreciates as we heard tonight. But uh, I don't know that many people understand the depth of that dedication to public service that has uh, motivated you both to participate. Uh, I do foresee that there will be more opportunities, and uh, given that this has been a significant part of your life, uh, you'll find something else to do. Um, I've been there and done that, uh, coming off of a lot of years of board service. The break was very welcome. I can tell you both, um, you know, please enjoy that. Despite what you heard of offers to go serve someplace else, um, I know better. Um, it, it's really important. Um, and yet, uh, I have no doubt that you'll find something meaningful to do working with people, working in the community in some fashion that, uh, that will allow that to continue. Uh, I know that, uh, Marilyn specifically asked me to pass along uh, well wishes for your uh, future endeavors, uh, knowing that, uh, that it will be important wherever you are and whatever group of people you're working with. So uh, once again, thank you. Mr. Reagan. Thank you, Vice President Cole. Uh, to the both of you, I just want to simply say thank you. I've learned from the both of you quite a bit. That is what I appreciate the most, is your willingness uh, to not only sacrifice for this district and these children, but uh, sacrifice to pour into me uh, when I knew that I needed it, and even when I didn't. And uh, I will always remember uh, all of the lessons that were learned. I will always remember your dedication and your service, your willingness to uh, hear me out, your willingness to rein me back in when needed, Ms. W. <laughs> and, and just thank you all for everything that you have meant um, to the city of Columbus and to uh, my children specifically. You both have served uh, over the educational experiences for both of my children. Uh, my son being a recent graduate of the district and me a graduating uh, next year. Uh, they have known for pretty much the majority of their lives, W. Shana Gibbs and Mary L. Baker, uh, as board members and leaders of the district, which they uh, are proud to call home for them. And that really does mean a lot. Um, we could not give you everything that you are due this evening. We would be here all evening, uh, and then part of tomorrow, and then the day after. Um, but hey, uh, we, we, we did do our best, and, and I am so happy uh, that you all will be able to take some time for yourselves now. The one thing that I have learned is that this is sacrifice, and I know that both of you have sacrificed quite a bit, and I, I believe that God smiles upon you for that. And so do take that time. Don't be in a rush to get back. Your families both need and love you, and they need that time that you are going to be able to give to them, and then when you two are ready, you will find some way to bless this city as you have for over uh, the 25 years that you have both combined in your service and leadership in this Columbus City Schools District. Thank you so much for everything that you have meant to me. Uh, please keep your phones on because I'm going to want to be calling again. And uh, and but, but thank you so much for everything. So, uh, I think the last uh, event that the senior member out here, or um, his vote, that's okay. And I will not know what to do. Um, so, I am not a singer, therefore I will not sing this year. I'm going to be very happy about that, even though we have sung together. 
I am not a poet, so I will not read you a poem. Uh, I am a musician, but you probably don't want to hear my trumpet playing after several years of not practicing. But uh, I have served 10 years with both of you. So I want to thank you for your hard work. <laughs> don't start. I want to thank you for your hard work and dedication. And I want you to know it's much appreciated. To sit on this board with you has been a true pleasure. You've been an example to others, as it has been stated. Both of you have grown up in this district, not only as children, as students in the district, but as community members and participants of this board. As it's been stated, Ms. W. Shana Give, that there's a football game, a PTO meeting a paint the plow, an art, a music program, a graduation, you were there. Gary, when you found your voice, after meeting the Deltas probably, <laughs> you too were out there, going from your bluegrass music to our soul food hunts when traveling. And we could see W. Sean Gibbs dragging you to many of these places. They say sometimes the hardest thing and the right thing are the same. But we've had a lot of tough issues. We haven't always agreed despite what everybody else thinks. Shauna, you and I have sat on opposite tables. I'd say probably about the first five years that we were on the board. Gary, you and Probably, I think you may have hung up on me once. I might have hung up on you a couple Not more times. Not on purpose. My battery died. <laughs> but what I've always known as is that both of you always thought about the right thing to do for our kids, for our district. Always keeping that in mind as you strive to make the right decision. From closing schools to superintendent evaluation direct the reports to whether we should do a levy, picking board members, not picking board members. Shauna, I do recall, and I want to thank you for giving a Latina an opportunity to sit on this board. I know there were people that thought that it wasn't time for that for this board. So I want to thank you specifically. My favorite quote from you that you've always given me and I've lived for and lived with is nobody can represent you better than you. And I've tried to strive that and I will continue to strive to make sure that I do the right thing that I've learned from you, even though I'm your senior. <laughs> Gary, you're smart and you always say, oh my. <laughs> will always be remembered. So I want to thank you both. I agree with everybody. We will see you again. We will see you still. Probably on January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and on. <laughs> so, in, the, in spirit. No. I'll be in the fourth. <laughs> so again, thank you. Thank you both for being true, 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 true board members and personifying what it means to be hardworking and dedicated Um, I, I wanted to take the opportunity to thank you for brevity uh, because we still have a small piece to yet convene for you that's special. Um, I've had the opportunity to serve on this board for you and with you for six years. Now. Um, I've been friends with you all for as long as I've lived in this city. I met you, W. Sean Gibbs. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I met you that night. Um, and we became very close friends and have been ever since. Gary, I met you as a West Side resident in the Westgate community. Um, somebody I approached and said, hey, I'm interested in being on this area committee. 
what do I need to do? Um, you took me in. You showed me the ropes. You gave me deep understanding of the rich history and context of the West Side. As someone who comes to the city as an install, um, you opened your arms to me and showed me a lot of different things about the way of the West Side. Um, I love you both dearly. This has not been very easy for me. It is not. It has not been easy for me um, because we have developed a flow together. We have. We've developed a flow. It is not a flow that is about a majority or a minority. It is a flow about mindset and work that comes with that. Um, in fraternal life, in sororal life, we call it one head. We call it one head. Everybody lines up from shortest to tallest, and everybody understands what it is. And the ace, Brother Sandy, passes it back all the way to the tape. The ace says it back, and the message is carried, and the work is done. I heard someone say, and I think it was uh, our fellow Sister Delta out there who said that work is the currency, and it is that mindset that I think it, that has carried us forward together in a way that has been productive, in a way that has utilized creative tension. Creative tension, folks. A mindset that's undergirded with service and knowing that we're here to solve problems. Not here to be the brightest and the best in the room. Not here to make sure my idea is the one that happens. But actually here to solve our problems. You have led with that kind of mindset. Your steady hand, Gary. A steady hand. A steady hand. You, if, if there was another career or life for you, it would probably be that of a surgeon. Someone who can walk right into the room and with a steady hand hold that heart, with a steady hand carved with that scalpel. Shauna, um, you have been an amazing force of will, of intellect, of institutional knowledge, of love, of peace, even. And the other person I would attribute that to is my brother Brian out there as well. You are two people who definitely, in the room, when we're having those kind of discussions, brought peace, brought peace. You've been a calming force to me. I can call you and you and have that, that, that other kind of discussion, you understand? Um, but we understand each other and we get back on track and we get our work done. This has been a very tough time for me. Folks are kind of looking at me like, so how do you feel, Mike? I, well, I, I feel as though, a part of me feels as though you are leaving. I ain't crying. I don't know. <laughs> Come on now. Now, you know, you ain't, you're not my baby graduating high school yet. <laughs> but I, there was a part of me that struggled with feeling left. I'll be very honest. I'm okay. My strength in it is in my vulnerability. It is. It's in my honesty. I felt like you all are leaving. We've got some pivotal stuff to do. We just brought in a dynamic leader. You guys are walking away. I was willing to fight to the teeth. I didn't care what anybody thought. I didn't care about no party. I didn't care about anything. I was willing to fight to make sure that you all were successful. But at the same time, I had to, as resolute as I was to that endeavor, I had to be as equally resolute to understanding what your sunset is, the value in that, and the fact that um, you want a life beyond this. And I gotta let go. I've gotta let go. Um, so I close with this thought that I love you both. Um, you have been a tremendous influence on me, my children. Y'all know my family. My children love you. Um, I just thank you for your service. I thank you for everything you have been, are, and will continue to be to the city of Columbus and so many who come in contact with you. Um, with that in mind, 
Um, Paul, I, I'd like the opportunity, if we can, to tee up just a brief video with some folks in the community who had some warm words and thoughts about our board leaders. our children first priority. You've maintained a love for the city that's quite unique, um, that you've carried over in your board leadership, whether you were president or whether you were a board member, period. Um, you've made that something special for our kids to be able to be very proud of, whether they know it or not. I'm very emotional about this. Every time I start to think about her leaving, much less talk about it, um, I get emotional because um, I'm gonna miss having someone who is tireless. Shauna Gibbs carries this district in her heart in every facet of her life. Mr. Baker, um, I wish you weren't taller than I was because uh, normally in all of the pictures that we've had taken together, uh, you're skying somewhere next to me. Um, and that really tells the story symbolically. Um, we're going to miss you because you've skied uh, here with the skyscrapers in central Ohio um, and you have too left quite a legacy that the rest of us will attempt to live up to. Shauna and I met each other when she was six, I wasn't six, 15 years old at the Columbus Urban League. I was the president and chief executive officer and she was in a program called OBT, Operation by Side Team. She was shadowing me. Then I said I wanted to meet your parents. She took me to meet her mother and father. We sat and we talked. And I said I see something in her and I'm going to do all I can to bring that out of her. And I have one condition. She has to go to school and get a degree. And every summer for four years she could come back and work at the Urban League for, for the summer. Then when her parents died, uh, mother and daddy, um, I became a surrogate father for her. I took the responsibility of uh, helping her grow up, dealing with her issues, uh, and kind of squiring her through life. And she's a member of my family, and when we meet for dinner or do uh, activities, Shauna joins right in as a member of our family. And in public, I call her my daughter. Shauna and Gary have always put kids first, and that's what City Year is about. Students first, collaboration always, um, and that's what they exemplify through the partnership. It's how do we support more kids? How do we remove the barriers that adults have created to impact our students that need our support the most? You know him, of course, as the school board member in Columbus for some 12 years. I know him as a leader on the national stage and a member of the Board of Directors of the Council of the Great City Schools. Over those many years, Gary has contributed to the improvement of public education in our cities across the country. As a coalition, we are stronger and better off for Gary's advocacy and abiding commitment to public education, particularly in our urban areas. At a time when public education is under assault on many fronts, we could always count on Gary's clear voice and stalwart presence to remind the nation why we fight to keep public education strong. If we had more Gary Bakers, then we could declare victory. Gary, thank you for everything you've done. Congratulations on your great work and stay in touch. Mr. Baker has been a show of leadership for me in a way that shows a steady hand, a steady hand. I teased him one time. I saw him at a, at a uh, gas station and I thought I would just try to harass him to see how he would respond. So I pulled up right behind him and started beeping a horn and yelling, bum, 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 bum. hey, move, guy. He did not budge. He did not move. He did not overreact. He didn't get out of the car red-faced. And when he finally saw me, we just broke out laughing. But what that experience taught me about him is that he's consistent across the board in that mental model of his leadership.
Ms. Gibbs has been a tremendous asset to Columbus City Schools and this community. And it all starts with her commitment and dedication to our students. There is no one, no one, that has a deeper commitment and understanding of what our kids go through and what they need to be successful. Shauna goes so hard in the paint for our youngsters, for our children in this district, our students, um, that she actually got a jacket made. <laughs> and in our fraternal and sorority worlds, we make jackets. She got a jacket made with Columbus City Schools logo on it. The, the year that she was uh, elected into the school board, her name on the back, Gibbs for Kids. Um, everything about her is definitely Gibbs for Kids. Gary Baker came and took on a leadership role as far as serving as president at a very critical time for this organization. Um, we were pretty much at crossroads and he stepped in, presided over some really difficult, tough calls in this organization as far as school closings, neighborhood realignments, um, and those are not easy calls, but he's always made those decisions with the interests of the students first and foremost. He is deeply committed to professional development and he understands that as a school board member, uh, he is part of a group of seven running a billion dollar operation uh, and that it takes education, it takes training. And so I've always been uh, impressed by his willingness to go, to take advantage of every uh, professional development opportunity that school board members have. Hey, Sean and Gary, congratulations on the occasion of your final board meeting. Your hard work and perseverance on behalf of the students of Columbus City Schools will be long remembered. Shauna, you know what I'll remember about you. Come on, say it with me, no surprises. And Gary, I will remember the respect you showed me in seeking my opinion and counsel on oh so many issues. Although you may have said fairly often, well, Mr. Treasurer, I don't think we're gonna do that, but at least you asked. So again, to both of you, congratulations and best wishes as you embark on your next endeavors. Years ago we had this conversation and it was about, I said, you know, people just want you to just compromise. And she said, but Mary Frances very sad and I concur. When we are fighting for what is right, there is no room for compromise. And what is right is whatever is in the best interest of children and families of Columbus City Schools. Sands, thank you so much for all that you've done to serve the children and the families, including mine, in this district. Thank you for being unwavering in your belief that our kids are capable of anything. I'm very proud of you, and you know that a thousand times. Uh, you've done more than we ever thought uh, we would get you to do, and sometimes sitting down, resting, was one of the things I tried to get you to do. Columbus will, School Board would be uh, without your energy but they know you've been here. You've left your tracks, you've left your ideas. I honor your role. I certainly don't want you to leave, but I do respect the fact that you feel it's your time to go and move on. And I certainly honor the fact of what you've given and gifted, in fact, to this community. Hope I'm around long enough to see you for many years to come. Uh, in both cases, I know where your heart is, and, uh, and I certainly hope that both of you have great continuing careers and that I have an opportunity to interact with you, uh, see you downtown or at different events. Keep that best foot forward going because you sure have a legacy that you've left behind.
all of the team that helped put this, this piece together. You guys did an awesome, outstanding job. Thank you again so much. That concludes, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, Ms. Gibbs. I'm going to start my points with pride. <laughs> ah, very well. Mr. Start. Brown, are you prepared with points of pride for Ms. Gibbs? I want <clears throat> the final words about me to be. About our children. So, um, a few points of pride. Uh, I can't say enough about these schools. Mifflin Middle School, Boroughs, Commonwealth Elementary, and Fairland and Watson. Just congratulations to all of the teams and the staff. Give them a round of applause. Everything they done first in the Test Award. I'm so proud of them. Um, I visited Johnson Park. <laughs> It was like, aren't you done? Not yet. I can still do a school visit. But Mr. Walker was um, very kind to receive me. Um, I met with their coaches. They had their musical program last Friday. So right after yeah, I know I came board meeting, I slid over there. Um, just not to interrupt, but to see them in motion. And they were absolutely engaged, learning going on. Um, the students at lunch helping um, all of the students. They have a number of inclusion classrooms. And, um, they were just full steam ahead getting the work on. So I do appreciate the work that's over at Johnson Park. If you get a chance and you want to find a school to partner with, um, think about Johnson Park. Um, you're in trouble, Yolanda. But the HBCU homecoming is coming up. Um, it is right here on Saturday, December 28th. I, I am a proud graduate of Clark Atlanta University. Um, and I love someone from Kentucky State University, but I love all of my HBCUs, and I love everyone. I love you, Chini. <laughs> I, I love uh, all of our HBCUs. They give our students a lot of opportunity. So if you get a chance, come by. That will be my last official act as a school board member. How about that? Um, right on Saturday, September 28th, and we accept all students. Just because it's an HBCU, we have students from every race and background attend HBCUs from all across the world. So we're so grateful for that. Y'all talked about Erin Pink. Give the girl a mic um, is coming up. If you know a young lady who would like to participate, they are now accepting um, applications and you can sign up to give the girl a mic. We met her, Erin, um, when she came to the board. And as all of you were reminded of all of my colleagues on the board, I've worked at each and every one of your daughters. I went to D.C. with yours. Nia and her beautiful cotillion yesterday. She was great. Um, on Sunday, your daughter at Kyle filmed your daughter at yeah, Washington and Gary. And Gary, I, I worked with all of your daughters, so I am an unapologetic advocate for young girls. And so you might want to take advantage of that. Um, I prepared a few words, and as I look in the audience and I see people, I, I knew that I needed to share this word. I see Dewan, I see. Lisa Casey Dickerson and Lori Diaz, my sins to Shakira, and Police Chief Kimberly Spears. OSU Police Chief Kimberly Spears McNatt, would you please stand up? I, she, she's trying to really blend in and be. She's a girl. Yes. And Tisha, stand up too. That's my sense. And the amazing T Street over there. That's my sense too. Our line was very tight. But I wanted to prepare some words. I'm glad that everyone is here. I'm glad that. Um, Dr. Barbara Spencer Ayers is here, and, and Crystal Boyce was here, um, and all of the people is here. But when I thought about it, I wanted to share a few words. And it's called, Before My Sentence Ends. As you look at some of these photos, my cousin Kyra Moore is in proud graduate of women, Franklin Middle School and the Columbus Alternative High School. Wave, Kyra. Kyra is always my... Um, She's my strong backbone when I get I'm weary. But it says, before my sentence ends, I begin my remarks with thank yous to the leaders, positions, and friends. And you'll be wondering if I call your name before my comments end. You remember the time we were in that meeting and I sent that text to you? 
you got back to me right away so I could share the facts with the group, or the time we had to host the event and I asked my people to come. Even if the hall was half full, I could count your seat as one. I have to wrap up years of memories, online posts, tweets, and hit send. I'll remember you and all you've done before my comments end. We served these years together, all the ups and downs, and yet you stayed right by my side despite the thinning crowds. Today is overwhelming. Hugs, kisses, pictures until night's end. But tomorrow it will be history and start to fade into the wind. So I will try to fill this last refrain with what you came to hear. A smile, a joke, the night we stayed woke, and the days you brought me cheer. We won that fight, then took an L and treated both events the same. It made a difference in the lives of a thousand or two, even if they don't remember our name. To my family, schoolmates, my sores and frats, district staff, church members, and friends, you are important, irreplaceable, unwavering, and you'll be at the beginning of where my comments end. Thank you. <laughs> President Baker, you were not in attendance yesterday, but this resolution was given to you on behalf of the entire city council to recognize you for your service, much of which has already been said. But to you, I thank you for staying at the table. I thank you for doing the right thing. I thank you for loving the city even when it didn't love you back. I thank you for your bluegrass music and your love of the Lord. But most importantly, I thank you for being a teammate, not just driving Miss Shana, but driving an agenda that unapologetically puts children first. Thank you for all you do. Thank you all. God bless you. God bless Columbus City Schools. One more thing, a big thanks to Brother J.T. Ayers for all your love and support through the years. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gibbs. Now, I do have it, and I have 8.30 in the pool, so I won't be long. Okay. Um, but I do have a few comments about my colleague, uh, Ms. Gibbs, and I do know what the W stands for. In a city, in a city, state, and nation full of fake leaders, W. Shawna Gibbs has always been the real thing. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve with her during the last dozen years. Board member Gibbs and I have uh, done all kinds of things together, marched in parades, we protested injustice. Anyone remember Senate Bill 5? Mourned together at the loss of students and team members. We've gone to conferences and workshops together. We've celebrated district accomplishments together. So board member Gibbs really has become my board wife. <laughs> and I'm fine with that. That's great. JT, I'm sorry. There is no other way to say it. However, despite the relationship you see now, we've not always gotten along or been on the same page. We've disagreed and been on different sides of issues many times over. My first few years on the board, in fact, saw frequent disagreements between us. This all changed, however, when she and I spent a few days together at a conference many years ago with colleagues from around the country. I saw her speaking and advocating passionately on behalf of students and families. I saw her speaking not just for some students or some families, but all of our students and all of it was also at this conference that I learned that board members from around the country all knew and respected her. They spoke to her and about her as an equal and even as an exemplar in the struggle to provide the very best possible public education to our students. 
I've watched her fight for what she believed was right. I've watched her fight for justice for our students. And as the war against public education continues to rage on, as privatizers and other public school opponents like Alex have attacked teachers and administrators and unions and associations and boards of education, and as our own state has refused to adequately fund public education, while at the same time labeling underfunded districts as failures, Board Member Gibbs has stood as a stalwart in the battle for our students' futures. She has taken more than her fair share of slings and arrows because she transcends politics and focuses on academic achievement and equity. She has sometimes angered folks whose motives are more about ego, optics, profit, politics. She has unapologetically stood in the gap between our students and anyone who did not have their best interests in mind or at heart. She has stood up for those who do not have a seat at the table in order to keep them from being on the menu. I have developed immense respect for her as a colleague, friend, mentor, and as a friend, as, a, as one of my best friends. I'll miss interacting with her on a regular basis, but I know she will continue to fight for justice wherever she goes. What else would you expect from Adele? <laughs> Godspeed, board member Gibbs. Thank you. Now, now, if you'll indulge me, I have just a few goodbye comments. This is the last time you'll ever have to listen to me. Thank you. Uh, in fact, I promised Vice President Cole I would keep my remarks short. He always reminds me of the three Bs. Brother, Brother be, brief. be brief. So I'll do my best. Not be I'll do my best. I beg your pardon. Not be. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I appreciate your indulgence. When I was first elected as your president six years ago, I talked about governing with integrity. We, we agreed at the time that that meant three things. Acknowledging that mistakes have been made in the past and that they will be made in the future because the district is made up of human beings. Humans are Number two, student achievement is our number one focus. It is the reason we are here. And so we tear that rearview mirror off of the windshield after acknowledging mistakes behind us. We throw it in the back seat and we look straight ahead focused on student achievement. Number three, we do everything with a renewed sense of urgency because our students, families, employees, and community partners just simply, they can't wait. Governing with integrity also means doing the right thing for the right reason every single time. This is the foundation on which I have served. The last 12 years have been full. It's been an honor and it's been a privilege to serve. It hasn't always been easy, but no one ever said it would be. And in fact, many people tried to discourage me from running all those years ago. People called it the hardest and least appreciated and lowest paid elected office in the state. And looking back on it now, they might have been right. <laughs> but I tell you, I would not change the last 12 years for anything. Despite personal, professional, and financial sacrifices, despite the beating we've taken at the hands of the local media, and in spite of the misinformation, disinformation, and outright lies, I remain committed to what I believe is the highest elected office one can hold in our state, and I am forever grateful for every mountain and every valley. The unfounded and false claims of people with clearly questionable motives no longer affect me personally. Some of the outside attacks on the district have chilled my body, but never my soul. I still believe, as I said during my first inaugural address as president, that the Board of Education is the instrument of the community elected to provide and to guide the free public schools to which most parents entrust the education of their children. There is no better instrument for democracy. As I prepare to 
to retire from public service after a total of 25 years. I could not be more grateful for the opportunity I have been given to pursue my personal calling to serve. In fact, I can trace that calling all the way back to sixth grade student council, uh, and I never looked back. Small town politics and some of the ham-handed and amateurish an antics of uh, local and national players aside, I go to bed every single night and wake up every single morning counting my blessings. I start by counting 50,000 students, their families, and our 9,000 employees. Some of my fondest memories of service are memories of school visits and time spent interacting with students and their families and the amazing employees and community partners of the district. I've enjoyed sporting events, plays, musicals, concerts, recitals, graduations, to name a few. There have been so many other amazing opportunities during the past 12 years, too many to name. My father told me as a child that there are different types of people in this world. He said there are takers and there are givers. He said there are plenty of takers already. And he encouraged me to be a giver. <laughs> I, hope, I hope he is proud as he looks down on me tonight. I have remained courageously consistent in my pursuit of student achievement. And I've always believed that one must be willing to lose what one has to do what is right. And I know that stepping into the gap to become a leader makes one a target. In fact, colleagues, you've all stepped into the gap. And for that, I'm grateful. Without thanking anyone else by name, because it would take too long and I would no doubt leave many out who deserve my gratitude, I'll just simply say thank you to all of you who have stood with me, with us, over the years on behalf of our children and our families and our employees and community partners. And as Shirley Chisholm once said, I remain unbought and unbossed. I did it my way, and if anyone asks you where I'm going, you can tell them I'm going up yonder. Thank you very much. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you very much. And of course, as always, Ms. Gibbs has to have the last yeah, word. Ms. Gibbs? President Baker, I'm extremely um, proud of you and all that you've done. I just don't want the moment to be lost. As we close out here at Afrocentric, the names of Charlene Morgan, Bill Moss, and Loretta Hurd, make sure they are spoken. It is because of their work, of those board members, that Afrocentric K-12 became a reality. We stand on very strong shoulders of those of whom we served and the colleagues in that beautiful montage. But we are here and you will continue to serve colleagues. Be not weary in well-doing for in due season you will reap if you faint not. Just stay focused on the goal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else for the good of the cause this evening, colleagues? If not, Motion to adjourn. So there is a motion, and I do believe there is second. a second from the Vice President. And hearing no objection, Mr. Treasurer, would you like to call the roll for one last time for we me? We'll play. I will. Ms. Adair? Mr. Brown? Yes. <clears throat> Vice President Cole? Yes. Mr. Raglan? Yes. Ms. Reyes? Yes. Ms. Gibbs? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. President Baker? Yes, sir. Thank you. We stand adjourned. I thank you all. Happy holidays. Season's greetings. <laughs>